often as I begin my week and move into the week, I find myself captivated by a particular passage or verse. And I find myself moving through that week, just thinking about it, meditating on it, praying about it. The, the verse that captured my attention this week was 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 and 4. Let me read those. <clears throat> we are human, but we don't wage war as humans do. We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. And so I thought, what are some of the human weapons that we use or that we're called not to use, that we're not to fight like everybody else fights? What are some of the things that um, we're supposed to pay attention to, the resources that God has for us? And I thought, well, uh, obviously truth is one of those, prayer, calling upon the Spirit to intervene and to step into. And, and I wondered, where else does this show up in Scripture? And so I, I did a cross-reference. And uh, so there's, there are some verses or words that will show up in other places. And some study Bibles have helpful little notations next to, well, you can find this, this from 2 Corinthians chapter 10. It led me to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. And it says, why don't you read verse 7? And so I will. So 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 7, so Paul writes, we faithfully preach the truth. Well, there you go. There is one of the weapons that God has for us. But he continues, we faithfully preach the truth. God's power is working in us. We use the weapons of righteousness in the right hand for attack and in the left hand for defense. And so righteousness, that is those characteristics that are, are God's character, God's righteousness, that, that which is right in accordance with God's standards and God's ways. And so, so that, that's one of the ways that we fight and we enter into battle, not the way that other humans do, but ways in accordance with God. And so I thought, well, where else does something like this show up? And, and it led me to Ephesians chapter 6, the armor of God, the very armor of God, the, the sword of the Spirit and the shield of faith and the helmet of salvation. And, and it moves on. And, and if you've never read Ephesians chapter 6, you need to make a point of doing that. And this is armor that God's very own armor that he gives to us, that he entrusts to us, that he equips us to to do battle the way that God deems and the way that um, God invites us to do battle. So verse 14, stand your ground, that is stand firm, putting on the belt of truth, there's truth again, and the very breastplate or the body armor of God's righteousness. And so it's the righteousness of God that we wear into battle, not any self-righteousness of my own, but the very righteousness that is those things that are right according to God's principles and God's ways. And then it took me, bounced me into the Old Testament, where Zechariah the prophet, uh, as they begin to rebuild Jerusalem and rebuild the temple in Jerusalem, God speaks to Zechariah in chapter 4, verse 6, and he says, Then he said to me, that is the Lord speaking to Zechariah, this is what the Lord says to Zerubbabel, it is not by power nor by might, it is not by power or by strength, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. The battle is the Lord's. The, the, the fight that we bring is through the power and the presence of the spirit. And, and, I, and I realize that even going back to Zechariah, that, that the, the battle that we are engaged in, either as a culture or as a people or as a community of faith, the battle that we are engaged in for our minds, for what is right and what is wrong, what is true and what is false, what is good and what is evil, it's not new. It's not a new battle. It's a spiritual battle. And it is not ours to somehow squeeze and manipulate and manage a victory. No, that's, that's what God does. And so that's why God invites us to rely upon his ways and his resources, to be a people of prayer, to be a people who stand on what is true and what is right, not only in word, not only in thought, but also in action. That needs to show up in, in the way we move through life, the decisions we make, and the, the places we go. Some takeaways. Here's some takeaways. I, I'm looking at my notes here because I wrote these things down because I, the, these, these impacted me and I want, I want to share them with you. We are to be a people as followers of Jesus Christ. We are to be a people who trust 
the resources of our God and not the wit or might of our own presence. We are to be a people as followers of Jesus Christ, as disciples who pay attention to character, understanding that character does mean something. We are to be a people as followers of Jesus Christ, intent on doing the right thing in both word and deed. We are to be a people who understand that the battle is spiritual and that the armor we wear is God's. And we are to be a people who stay true to the path that God has given us, to fight as God invites us to, to lay down the weapons of our culture and to pick up the armor and the weapons of God, which are his spirit and his word and his truth, and inviting him to go into those places and into those battles with us, standing true to who God has called us to be and made us to be, as God continues to change us and transform us and grow us up in his character, which is the fruit of the Spirit, which is a whole other devotional. We'll do that another day. God bless you as you move through the rest of this week, and we'll chat next week.